Isn't it nice and cosy this morning? Oh, well, four of you are anyway. <laughs> Praise God. Bless you, Jane. It's wonderful what uh, Chris was just sharing. You know, the one thing you've got to remember, God is building his church. And you know, when God's on with something, sometimes we can't always see what he's doing. But where the appointment is, the provision is. And you know, this place is blessed. God has blessed this church. And God's doing some awesome things. And there's change, obviously, coming in the church. And there's different things happening. But you know, God is in control. And you've just got to remember that. Our trust is in him. Our focus is in him. And and the truth is, what Doc was saying, you can never outgive God. You know what I mean? God knows and he he rewards you diligently with whatever you do. And as you pour in, God will pour blessing on you. It just happens. It's just a fact of the life of living a walk with God. Uh, I just want to start with a a little story. uh, Because my topic this morning is run the race. And uh, when I was just waiting on the Lord yesterday and just praying about what was the right thing to bring to the church, uh, it was really funny. I was at work the other day and, and <coughs> blessed Pastor Will. Uh, I, didn't, I wasn't really sure what was going on. I knew I was, I was covering while they were away. And, and he sent me a word. Uh, last week I gave a word, or the week before, that uh, God knows the path we're going to walk and he's going to walk it with us and uh, we will not walk it alone. And uh, Will just said he'd really taken that onto his heart. Uh, it had really spoke to him. And he just said, I know God's words will be in your mouth for the next two weeks. Blessings to you all. I'm off to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I was just praying and waiting on God for what the Lord wanted to bring to this body this morning. And to myself. And as I was just waiting on the Lord, the Lord brought back to me. Well, that's Will. They tell you what, it's so quick. <laughs> it's just... And, uh, yeah, it's got an encouraging word. <clears throat> and uh, when I was about 19, we had some friends in our church that used to be into running, street running, road running, and stuff like that. And they invited me along when I was about 19 years old. And they said, what we'll do is we'll just, we'll, we'll take it easy with you for your first time. And he says, we'll just do two or three miles and, uh, and just build you up gently if you're interested and you can come along so I went nah don't worry about that let's just go for the six we'll just do six I'm, I'm young I'm fit I know I can do this it's not a problem and he says are you sure and I said yeah come on let's just go for it so I remember getting up this Saturday morning about eight o'clock in the morning uh, got what trainers on I'd got on uh, they weren't proper running trainers they were just trainers but you know you're 19 does it really matter and we set off running and uh, really going for it. And uh, I sprinted off at the start, you know, just to show that, you know, I'm fit. And, and these guys were in their 50s and, and uh, just to really sort of show my fitness. And after about a mile, I started to peter off and got a bit of a stitch. And they came up alongside me and they were just, just breathe it out, Mark, just breathe it out. And at the time, I was a little bit embarrassed because I thought... I'm 19, why have I got a stitch? Anyway, I carried on, it was, it was agonising. And they were going, whatever you do, don't stop, just keep going. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I'll just keep going. And, uh, and we kept going, and we did the six miles, and I got home, and I remember sitting at home with my parents, and, uh, and my dad goes, how do you go? And I go, <gasps> fine. <laughs> the truth was, it absolutely killed me. Anyway, the next morning I woke up for work and normally, you know, you'd spring out. At 19, I used to spring out of bed. Not so much now. It's a bit of a roll, hit the floor and, and gather myself. And, uh, and I went to spring out of bed and I could hardly move. My ankles were hurting. I was walking like John Wayne. My muscles in my legs. I was like this. And I remember, getting, I remember getting to work, and I think at the time I was doing a bit of a roof, and, and I remember getting to work, and you had to sort of climb 
to get onto the thing. And, and I was actually lifting my legs up like this to get onto the scaffold. And I remember being in agony for about four or five days. And the following week come and they said, uh, are you joining us? And it was probably pride. And I, and I was just like, yeah, yeah, not a problem. Let's go for it. And inside I'm thinking, wow, this is ridiculous. This is just absolutely killing me. But I said, can we just do the free? <laughs> this Saturday. And then they went, yeah, yeah, that's fine if that's what you want to do. And I go, yeah, yeah, I think I, I just overdid it a little bit sort of last week and I probably just need to take it a little bit easier and, and over the years and it was years we used to do running gradually built up to sort of doing half a marathons on a Saturday we'd run 13 miles and you'd come back you'd never know now probably but at that time I was quite fit and, uh, and we used to do half marathons and, and bought really expensive trainers to cushion your feet so your ankles didn't throb with pain as you was pounding the floor. And as we went on, I learned from the people that I run with how to run. You see, when you're running and you're going along the flat, it's fantastic. And you can get a pace going. And there's times when, and I can't remember what it's called now, but there's times when you're running that you, you sprint for a certain amount of time, just to get your heart rate up, and then you drop back down to a steady pace again, and then you'll sprint, and, it, and, it, and it's part of, of training and, and getting yourself fit and getting your heart rate to get to that level of fitness. And then you used to get to the hills. And I always found that when I got to the hills, I used to look down, because I didn't want to look at the hill. Because it was so demoralising when you was running up them sometimes, and they just kept going, and we used to run around Church Lake through the tops. But I always knew in my mind and in my heart that when I got to the top, I would have a little bit of a breather going down the other side. So you could catch your breath, you could gather yourself, and you could just take it steady going down the other side and ready for the next one that went up. And uh, I used to just look down and focus, not so much just, just concentrating on what I was doing and just keeping the pace. And I was just thinking about this and really thinking about you see Paul says in Hebrews and we'll just turn to it in Hebrews 12 wherefore seeing we are also are compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight of sin that doth easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us and through scripture, Paul uses the race quite a bit. You see, in them times, remember the Romans, they, we, they would have had the big arenas, that we now probably call the Olympic Games, but they would have had the big arenas, and they used to run around, and the crowds in the arenas would cheer them on. And Paul talks about running a race, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider this, that he endured such a contradiction of sin, sinners against him, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds, ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And he hath forgotten the exaltation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, for, nor faint when thou art rescued of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye enjoy chastening, God dealeth with you as sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastening, wherefore ye are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we, have not, we are not fathers of our flesh that corrected us and gave them reverence. Shall we not much more be in subjection unto the father of the spirits that we live? And Paul's talking about persevering, running, and, and uses sin quite a bit in the fact of that race and dealing with the things in our life and dealing with the things that come around us at that time. You see, every single one of us are in a race. Each one of us, our race may be slightly different. We may race in a different way. You see, I don't know if you remember, uh, Chris will remember, Years ago, I remember watching the Olympics and there was a young runner called Zola Bord. 
And she really hit to fame because she used to run barefoot. She wouldn't wear trainers. And there was massive controversy at the time because she ran in the, the Olympics and she, uh, she was accused of, but then cleared, of tripping over... Was it Mary Decker? Yeah. Yeah. Mary Decker. And she tripped her over and, uh, and that girl came out of the race. But Zola Borg carried on and she came seventh, I think, at the time. But she was there, really. She, they thought that she would win that race and win the gold. And there was a lot of thing about whether she was an advantage of running barefoot or whether she wouldn't. But where she was born in Africa, that's where they run. They run barefoot. And that was the way she ran her race. That's the way she did it. And she persevered and carried on. And she, she beat world records in the 5,000 metres, if I remember rightly. And, uh, and cross country and all manner of things. And I thought, wow, I just don't know how she does it barefoot. It must kill. But that was the way she run a race. She didn't copy anybody else. She was individual. You see, every single one of us in Christ, even though we're part of a body, we're individual. And God may call you to do something that somebody else can't do and may cause you to run in a slightly different way with the same goal and the same outcome, but you'll do it in a slightly different way. God doesn't want us to conform to somebody else because that's the way they did it he wants us to run that race that he set before us and he doesn't want us to give up when we fall down you see through life you know we're born as children and we, we grow up and things happen in life and then as we become saved and born again in Christ Jesus he works on us and he changes us and he prepares us really. When you're first born again, he prepares you for the race. He doesn't expect you to do what I did and just get up and just go, hell for leather, go for it, boom, running like the clappers. He prepares you, he trains you, he feeds you. Paul talks about it as the sincere milk of the word. Being given the milk and being and fed up and, and being prepared and being strong and then preparing you to start that race that God has called you to run. And there'll be times in that race where you'll fall down. You'll make mistakes. We were just having this conversation earlier before church that there's times in our lives where we make mistakes. We fall. But, you know, because we're children of God, we get up again. I don't know if anybody watched Mo Farah in the 2012 Olympics when he run his race and he'd already run a couple of goals and he was running and he fell and he hit the floor. And I think everybody gasped. And when you listen to his story, as he hit the floor, he was speaking to himself and saying, you've got to get up, you've got to get up, you can still win this, you can still do this. And he got up from falling, and he chased the pack of runners, and still won the race and won gold. From falling on the floor and rolling on the floor, he still got up and won. He could have laid there and just thought, I've lost it, I've had it. I might as well just stay down. I just walked back to my coach. I've blown it. I've messed up. But he didn't. He got up. And he kept running. And he won. He won the gold. You see, Paul talks about running the race and, and finishing. When Paul had finished his ministry and his calling, he says in the Word, doesn't he? He says, I've run the race. I've finished. I've completed. I've reached the goal. And I'm done. And he was passing it down to Timothy to carry on ministering as a, a pastor and as a, a minister of God. You see, there's timers in our race where we run and we have seasons, like I was sharing, we have seasons of sprinting. It's funny the Christian walk is and God has plans for our lives and he has seasons for our lives when things will happen in our race where there'll be seasons of sprinting and, and seasons of, of multiple blessing I'm not saying there isn't blessing all the time, but there's seasons in our life where the anointing of God, and there's a season in our lives where God just outpours and outpours through a vessel, and God uses them for a season of time, and then that sprint stops, and then they carry on running. You see that with men of God through the Word. You see it from men of God in life today. There's mighty men of God where God's used them for probably a two or three year stint awesomely. And you see signs and wonders and miracles and, and awesome outpourings of God. And then all of a sudden it just stops. 
They don't stop running, they keep running. But they had a season in their life where it just sprinted. And all of a sudden, they were like, they'd been racing perhaps for 10 years. And then all of a sudden, boom, it took off. And there was a season of time where it just flourished. And God rewarded and blessed and poured out, preparing new people, preparing a body of people. And people coming in and getting born again and saved. And then it went down to that pace again. That doesn't mean the blessing's changed. It's just seasons in our life. Like the running. I tell you, I used to, when that pace come and you used to really start going for it, and your heart would be like, do, 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 and you'd be like, man, I love, I'm going to have a heart attack. But then when you slowed down, it was that recovery, how fast your heart recovered when you was running. How quick it would get back to that pace. I believe God's been preparing this church for a season. I really believe this church is going to flourish and God is going to do mighty things in this place. You know, I, the other week when we were praying for Michael, you know, the Lord just gave me that vision back. Years ago I had a vision of people queuing down that street and queuing down there and queuing to get in the church to get in. And the Lord just reminded me of that dream. You see, God is going to bless foundations have been laid in this place God wants to pour out and do mighty things but God may do things in a slightly different way and what God's saying is don't stop, just keep running just keep running that race just keep going for it because the reward is great praise God Amen 1655 I just want to just quickly flick over to uh, John. I'm not going to tell you what it is, so I can get to it first. (laughs) It's John 21. I think it is. And dun, dun, dun. okay, this is about Jesus uh, just talking to Peter and the fishermen in the boat. Uh, without going through the whole thing, you know, Peter's out there fishing in the nets. Jesus has died; he's resurrected. All of a sudden, this man appears to him on the beach. There's Peter fishing with his men, stark naked. Probably not what I'd do, especially in this country quite cold and uh, they've caught nothing and he tells them to cast the nets on the other side and they cast the nets on the other side and they drag all these fish in verse 11 it says and so as people went up drew in the nets full with great fishes 150 and three for all there were many yet were not one that the nets broken And Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples did ask, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. And Jesus said, Come and ask, and take of bread, and give of them fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. And then Jesus speaks to Peter. So when they had dined, Jesus said unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, Do you love me more than these? And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, knowest thou that I love thee? And he said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said unto him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love us me? And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou more than me? And Peter was grieved because he had said unto him the third time, Does thou love me? It's quite incidental that Peter denied him three times and Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? And there's Peter getting grieved. Feed my sheep. Verily I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and thou walkest with thou wouldest. But when thou be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall guide thee and carry thee where thou wouldest not. This spake signifying the death that would glorify God. When he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. 
Then Peter turned unto him, see if the disciples whom Jesus loved and followed, which he leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is it that betray thee? Peter seeing that he hath saved Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? And Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is it that they do? Follow thou me. Then when they say in abroad among the brethren that the disciples should not die, yet Jesus did not unto him, he shall not die. But if I will that he tarry till I come, what is it to thee? Peter's getting a bit frustrated there because Jesus is talking to Peter and there's John there, and Peter's turning around and going, hang on a minute, what about him? What about John? You see, all the disciples, pretty much apart from John, martyred for their faith. They were martyred and died for what they believed and stood for. Uh, Peter was going to the cross. He was crucified upside down, as we know. And, uh, but John wrote, and um, the Lord spared John to write all these books. You see... John and Peter were there together, but they've both got a different race. Peter's finish of his race was completely different to John's, even though they walked together. And there's Peter, a man that we know, fell and, and, and in one way, as far as he's concerned, let God down, let Jesus down, denied him, said he never knew him, didn't want anything to do with him. When people asked him, wasn't interested. No, don't know nothing about him. But then we know that in the story earlier that Jesus turned around and said to tell Peter that I love him. You see, Peter had got a race to run. And the Lord had called Peter really to be that time to gather the church together, to lead the church into Acts. I mean, look at the amazing things that took place in Acts. When Peter stood up in front of the people and, uh, and declared the word of God about Jesus, that still he, alive, he was alive and he lived in them. The power and the outpouring of God, that was Peter's sprint. God had taken him from the upper room, he'd, he'd uh, anointed the disciples, but Peter now, it was his time to sprint. Somebody that had made mistakes, that had dropped clangers in his life, that had uh, denied the person that had led him all that time, but God had called him and chosen him for such a time as this. And it was Peter's sprint time. You know, the amount of miracles and signs and wonders that took place, even the shadow of Peter passing by, the, dis the crippled and the lame were getting up and, and being healed. The amount of things that were going on. And Peter, we know that Peter used God mightily. But his end was that he was going to be crucified for what he believed and what he taught. That was the end of his race. He'd finished the race, he was being cheered on by the saints, but that was his call. And you know, each one of us have got a different destiny. Even though we're running together, we've all got destinies in Christ that the Lord wants us to fulfill. And really, I want to encourage you. There may be people leaving, and I dare say, and I believe Pastor Will shared with you about myself. You know, I really feel that God is uh, wanting me to just draw my family together, my wife. You know, we need to fellowship together. That's what I feel in my spirit. And uh, I really feel that now's the time for me to do that. But listen to me, church. I love this church. And I love you people. And, uh, and you will see me again. I know Pastor Will says he wants me to come and preach. And I will pop over and I will come and see. And I'll come to Ignite. I thought it was awesome the other night. Pop along. And, uh, but I appreciate your prayers. Because I really believe God is just putting me into a different place in my race. And it's not because of anything negative. I believe it's positive. Yes. And I want to encourage you, church, that, you know, our races, even though we're running for the same goal, they may lead us into different places. And just because you see people go and move on, remember the church is worldwide. The church is a body. It's not just this little bit in Rugeley. It's the whole of the UK. It's the whole of the world. We're a body together. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and what I would encourage you, do not be discouraged. You know, there's power in a group of people. You know, God doesn't say there's power in a larger group of people. It's not about numbers. A lot of time in church, we, we grade a church doing well because the seats are all full. It's not about that. This church will be flourishing 
when you see sinners come in and get born again. A church that is flourishing in revival is flourishing on new birth. We want to see people come in and get born again and saved, set free, delivered and walk with God. And you know the things that are taking place out the back with Ignite and the coffee bar, reaching into the community to touch people's lives, that's what church is about. You know, God wants to change people's lives. He wants to reach them and meet them where they are. And, you know, and I think it's awesome what's taking place. I think it's awesome what's happening in the body. You know, it's great when God decides to just shake things up a little bit and get rid of the cobwebs and the dust and, and just blow through the place and bring in a new life. You know what I mean? And that's what God's doing. So this morning, be encouraged. God is breathing new life. You know, it's really funny. You know, a few months ago, you know, I know uh, there was people praying for revival, praying that God would do a new thing, that he would move, that he would outpour. He's doing it. He's answering your prayers. So don't be discouraged. Be encouraged. God is answering your prayers. This is great news for what God is doing. You know, and I, I really believe God is just on with something awesome. And be encouraged. And you know, if, you feel, if you've tripped up, if you've fallen down, if you feel discouraged, if you feel that you're not uh, adequate enough or capable enough to do something, then listen to me. Remember Peter. I dare say when Peter denied Christ, and I dare say he would have gone away and wept in a corner, I dare say at that time he would have felt the most inadequate, unworthy, unloved, not wanted. I know if it had been me, I'd be thinking, wow, none of the disciples are ever going to want anything to do with me. Jesus is never, ever going to want to speak to me again. The person that I used to lean on and rest against, I have completely cut off and denied. No one's ever, ever going to want to use me again. He's never ever going to want me to pick up the guitar and play again. They're never ever going to want to use me in the coffee bar again because perhaps I nicked the bourbons. <laughs> but you know, God is a God of new beginnings. And he's a God of, of fresh beginnings. And you know, I encourage you, get up and run the race. Get up and keep pressing on and keep running. You know, you may be... You know, you know, sometimes when you're overweight, sometimes, and you see, I've seen people running when they're, and they're really going for it. It's hard running. It's really hard running. Because you're trying to get fit and you're starting from that place. But you know, as they keep going and they keep getting fitter, you know, some of us may be spiritually obese. We've got so much knowledge and so much stuff on the inside of us that we're just bursting but we never do anything to let it out so we're just sitting here like vegetation on our seat and God may be calling you and saying wow you know you've got a wealth of my word inside you you've got a wealth of my life inside you it's time to get off your seat and it's time to run it's time to get physically and spiritually fit and it's time for you to be active in the body we're all at different places in that race you see and God may be just speaking to you this morning. Perhaps this is your season. Perhaps this is your season to sprint. Or this is your season to just pace it down a bit. But you know, we're still in the race. We're still running for gold. And one day, we're going to stand before God. And give an account of what we've done in Him. And give an account of what we've done by His life on the inside of us. And it says He's going to reward us. Praise God. And we'll just lay it down at his feet. Why? Because, you know what? It's just awesome, isn't it? We're a body and we're just going to cheer each other on. And, you know, I'll be cheering this body on from the sidelines. I'll be cheering you on. I'll be there praying for you and cheering you on in Christ. And, uh, and I, I want you to pray for me. You know, I'm just stepping out in faith here. I don't know what I'm going to do or where we're going at the moment. But I'm just stepping out in faith. The Lord knows my heart and uh, I'm just believing God is going to do something fresh and new. Amen. The same as for you. Praise God. So be blessed this morning. I hope that word spoke to you. It spoke to me. Amen.
praise God. And you know, if you want prayer uh, this afternoon, you know, please come after the service and we'll just pray with you. Uh, you could be in a state of your life where you just feel you need confirmation or you just need prayer on something. Then, you know, we'll pray with you. Amen. We'll pray for you. But I'm just really excited for what God's doing and be encouraged. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jane.